Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony. Welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talk. And yesterday, I promised you guys a video, so today I'm delivering. See, I'm a nice guy. But basically, what I want to uh, talk about today is Nate Solder. So he dropped out, and according to Sport Ra- Spot Rack, Sport Track, Spot, yeah, according to that website, uh, we don't have a lot of cap space next year. Uh, if if it does fall, now there are a lot of e ahs and oohs, I guess you would say, based on you know how many fans are allowed in stands and things like that based on, you know, the salary cap next year, but it's projected to be around $175 million. and if so, the Giants will have less than $10 million in cap space because we'll have to move the Nate Solder contract to next year, and that's pretty much all the money this year is to next year, minus, a, you know, a couple hundred thousand, not really that much, but we we're hoping to cut Nate Solder next year, potentially, and uh, that's a big thing because he'll be 33 next year. Now, he'll have a bunch of rest, a bunch of time to mentally get right Hopefully his son, you know, everything goes right with him. You know, that goes without being said. His son's healthy, potentially cancer-free, because that's good for his family, and it would be good for the New York Giants. Now what that potentially does is Matt Paird. Like, do we, you know, have another year of him developing? You know, he's a third-round pick, so it's not, like, urgent. But, you know, you'd like to see a couple more snaps from him, you know, next year. You'd like to see him start to be utilized, build his frame, and get some reps in, in with this offense and Daniel Jones potentially even be a left tackle for us I, I don't think so I think Andrew Thomas is the left tackle of the future but you know that's something that we have to think about we have 7.7 million dollars next year according to the current projections now the Giants are a very young team now we're the fourth youngest team in in the the I would say the nation but we're the fourth youngest team in the entire NFL and that's going to be good this year because everyone's focused on COVID I mentioned some potential players that can drop out like a Kevin Zeitler that are a little bit older, may have families, like a Colt McCoy, may have families, haven't heard anything about that. So I have some very young guys that are going to be looking to, you know, prove something. And Joe Judge at this point, he doesn't have a system. So that means the older coaches like a Pete Carroll, like a Bill Belichick, like maybe even a John Harbaugh have their systems in place. But young coaches that haven't really won, haven't really done much in the NFL, they can now adjust and have a whole new system. We started talking back in the spring in terms of, if any one coach, myself included, couldn't come to work that day or for any period of time, how would we address meetings, practice on the field, the game? Oh, we got to make sure we have a plan. You know, my job is to make sure that we're preparing for all the possible scenarios that could come up throughout the season. You know, it's not only things we've thought of already, but things that pop up as we go. Of, okay, what if this happens? What's our plan in place? I mean, it's new for all of us right now. It's a new staff. It's the first time we're being together on the field together. First time being with our players together. So. These are things that we've been able to take this early reporting opportunity to iron out some details and get on the same page. One thing is it's not something foreign to our players now. They've already gone through an entire spring of it, so if they can't be in the meeting room with us, they can be in the hotel room with whatever their personal situation is and still participate in the meetings and not fall behind on the mental aspect. You know, we're just not going to make any excuses for anything that comes up this season. You know, we're all here to play and coach football. We're here to do it well which young coaches flourish this year and which older coaches are just stuck in their ways, can't adapt, and that ends up not working with the team. We saw with the Black Lives Matter, Joe Judge, understanding of everyone's circumstances and things like that. Are there going to be some hard asses out there that, you know, they may be right in a way, like ultimately they may be right in their opinion maybe or wrong as well, but it doesn't work with the team because, you know, they, they want to voice their opinions. They want to feel, even if they don't voice their opinion, they want to make it seem like they can if they want to. And that's what Joe Judge wants. He wants to build a culture here. And uh, this can end up working out for the Giants. But more specifically, let's take a look at the contracts net next year that we can cut. DeAndre Baker is going to be a big one. Uh, it depends on the whole legal fees and everything. But we can save up to $5 million potentially next year uh, in, in his contract. I'm not too sure the exact numbers, but we can save on him. We can also save on Spencer Pulley. He's a $0 ca- you know, cap hit. We... We, uh, we save everything. We end up calling, cutting Spencer Pulley. And if Shane Lemieux really works out, that's going to save us another $2.3 million. Um, also, Cody Kaur, $1.4 million. We can cut him. That's not a huge thing in the grand scheme of things because an average player is like 700000 So you're not really cutting much. But they're going to be some of these small ones. David Mayo's contract is pretty much all up front. We can save $2.2 million with him. Um, you know, Sam Beal save another million, BJ Hill as well, but I think we should keep those guys. And between Lorenzo Carter and O'Shane Zimenez, one of those guys is going to pan out a little bit and one of those guys isn't, so you can get rid of one of those guys. So I don't think that the Giants should get a Jadavion Clowney. I don't think we should get a Logan Ryan because let's build up the team. 
But it's not like, oh, you know, we need to get this guy, this guy, Max on free agency. We have $14 million to spend. If we're on a roll towards the end of the season and we have some injuries and you want to supplement some guys, I can see that. And, you know, we want to do some trades, some contracts, something like that. I can see it. But let's not get too ambitious. Let's not try to spend everything. Let's try to be a little bit responsible because next year we're not going to have a bunch of cap space to work with. And uh, that that's going to be a problem. You take a look at the top of the roster. James Bradbury is a $19 million dead cap hit if we cut him. Um, Nate Solder, obviously, we know he's going to be, you know, upwards of nine million dollars. I think next year, um, you know, you have Kevin Zeidler that I think should stay on the team, but he's only a two point five million dollar cap hit next year. If we cut him, we can also do that. So there are some options. There are some flexibilities for us. Uh, we can also cut your Bill Preppers or Evan Ingram if we see fit or trade them. So there, there are some options that the Giants have. Uh, again, I think that uh, we should just remain responsible at this point. Don't go out and spend. Let's have let's have these guys on the roster prove their worth. Let's not have like oh we need this guy we need this guy. You know the Patriots, they they get rid of Chandler Jones. They get rid of you know Ty Laws and all, all the Richard Seymour's of the world. That, that that's who they get rid of. They don't need anybody. And if we're gonna be a long term successful team, let's not worry about free agents. Let's worry about in house stuff. And that's something I really want to stress. Um, yeah, and uh, you know remember we have still have the Saquon Barkley contract coming. Ideally, we want to pay Daniel Jones because that means he's playing well. Uh, Golden Tate, we you know I don't think we're going to re-up his contract, but we have some guys on this roster that we want to sign. Dalvin Thomason versus uh, Leonard Williams, the, you know that that sort of thing. So I could see if you want to bring Jadavion Clowney if he wants to sign for ten million, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think uh, about everything we discussed in this video. I, I don't think that this whole thing with Nate Solder is going to be a massively positive thing. You can say, oh, you know, we can have guys developing. Do you know we play the first three weeks? Like We all know, the uh, first four weeks pretty much. Do you know we play? Even Michael Brockers on the Rams, I think that's his name. He He's good. So uh, these these defensive lines are legit. It may not be the best thing to throw them out into the wolf, you know, in, in with the Wolves, I guess. It is what it is. They're going to have to roll with the punches. We just started training camp today. It's exciting. You see the guys fresh out on the field. Uh, and uh, Evan Ingram looks healthy. Everyone looks healthy. Everything looks ready to go. And, you know, the injuries are going to happen. I may make a whole separate video about injuries, but just some brief depth questions. An offensive line, if we get an injury on there, I'm very concerned. If Kevin Zeiler goes down, oh, you know, that sort of thing. So we don't have the greatest depth on the offensive line. The The way to question depth is just like, if one player goes down, how would you feel? If in cornerback, let's say, a, uh, let's say Sam Beal goes down, do you feel that, you know, great about our depth? linebackers, if Ryan Connolly goes down again, or, you know, Blake Martinez, do you feel that confident there? So that's kind of a little bit of a litmus test. We have some good depth at some positions like wide receiver, but we also don't have good depth at other places like linebacker. Um, you know, outside linebacker, yeah, but inside linebacker, not that not that much, you know, the, the elite end. But hopefully we have some guys that work out. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm saying hopefully a lot, but I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.